That's a water pipe. That's a sprinkler system. There's a gas line, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide. That one has sweet tea. This one right here has the tears of liberals in it. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're starting a new project, taking a minor break from the beaded accent wall, so don't panic. We're gonna get to that in two weeks. It's at my house, so I have some room to wait on that. But on these kind of jobs on our schedule, we just gotta get these done. But this one's unique. It's going to be a judges panel and what that is is basically a double panel. That's usually what I call it. It's a double panel. You've got a panel here. You can kind of see my blue chalk lines here and then it's a smaller panel up top and then a larger one on the bottom. Very similar to this section of the door. So you got this large panel here. It's taller and then a smaller one on top of that. We've already got this thing laid out and we're gonna get to cutting up some of this wood. Windsor one right here and we're set up in the house. We usually don't do this, but it's kind of deceiving. I have a nice day today, but it's gonna be raining all week and we will be cutting all week. So we went ahead and set up in here and essentially we're gonna be putting this double panel wainscot all through here where you see that paint, that paint color change on the wall. So there's gonna be like a bookshelf slash cabinet right here. This is the only wall we're not gonna be doing it on. And that's gonna come off the wall 12 and three quarters. So I went ahead and made this plumb line right here and we can just do our math off of that. So we got our stop block. So then I'll just set up my stop block for the styles and we're gonna need seven of those at 48 inches. And I just put the blade down and then run this uh, stop block right to 48 or whatever dimension I need and then lock it down and it gives me exactly 48. So I figured out the math on our mid rails and it's gonna be 18 and 3 8 every single mid rail. So I'll set up my stop block for 18 and 3 8 same exact way I did before. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. So in this situation, no problem. We'll take off this little crown stop here and then we could slide the saw over that way a little bit more. Let's see where we're at there before I tighten it up. Oh yeah, we're good. Right there. Perfect. So we'll cut one, two, three, four, five, six of those. So either one of these boards will work. So we'll start with this one. And you can see that floor there too. Pretty big uh, unevenness there, but that's not gonna affect us because we came up off the floor and we're gonna put a shoe molding on. Actually, we're not going to, the flooring company is, but it'll cover up all that imperfection. And then from here on out, it's pretty easy. Just glue and screw and then People have questions about like, if you glue to this primed surface, like I'm about to glue this 
in the grain right there to a primed surface, is that really even worth it? I used to not do it, but I think it actually does help. I used to actually say, oh, you don't need to do that. But I think just having that little bit of glue and something there, it just helps it from, you know, all these materials are gonna move around. So it's just a little added benefit. So ever since I started doing that, I think the results are better. So we just do it from now on. And the glue right there is set. No, I'm just kidding, I don't know. That's pretty cool how it balanced on its own for me to get this clamp. So next is my mid rail, which is gonna go right here and create the judges panel, or excuse me, the double panel. So since this mid rail is a mid rail and it's the same as the one we just installed, I can use that as a stop for down here, or not a stop rather, but a spacer. So when I bring in my next style, it's the exact same and they're gonna line up, making everything flush and plumb here and flush and level here. And it's just a big thing I like to emphasize when doing this stuff because in order to get this consistency, it's gonna take a stop block, a sharp blade that doesn't deflect and just repeatable processes. It's like setting up these spacers. Because I could assume if I took this out, I could just you know, line this up here and just assume that it's gonna be flushed down, down there. And it might be okay, but there's you know, some wiggle room you could have here with this still being flush here, which is then gonna be <laughs> exponential as you go down this way. It's just gonna make the problem larger. So spacer blocks, stop blocks, and just repeatable processes is what's the key to this stuff. So one thing I kind of failed to mention that is really important is that when I'm setting this one, I'm spacing for this. So I should probably start screwing this one in first. Then I can move this spacer and then put my vertical spacer in. I haven't done that and I just checked it. Thankfully I got lucky and they kind of squared themselves up, but that's something that can go wrong too. So I got a little bit complacent there, but that's really what I need to do. All right, so now I can bring this one in. And you can see it pretty much squares itself up. But I don't want to steer anyone in the wrong direction if you're trying to build one of these things. Yeah, they're like freaking cabinet quality which is what we're after. So the, the cool thing about this, you can see I'm about halfway done. And this Windsor stuff is super lightweight compared to like MDF, what we used to use, which is very dense and heavy. But I can just lift this thing up like nothing. Pretty cool. All right, so we're moving along here down to our last panel. And before I set this spacer block, one thing I can do that's gonna show how good I did my math, or lack thereof, is this is the last one. So this should fit in here. And then our last style should fit right here. And that one is gonna be good to go right there. Yeah, I'm gonna call that good. So if this was like a little bit off like this, maybe like an eighth or something, cause it's hard to get this last one to line up. You could just shave this down and, you know, bring it over this way. Or if it was, you know, a little too in, cause the last panel is always gonna be the awkward one. If it was like a little too much in, 
So you could just remake this piece and just make it a little bit longer. As long as it's like no more than a quarter. Even your human eye probably wouldn't even pick up like three eighths. But I just try to keep it like around a quarter and you know, no one's gonna come in here and like measure this. But as long as you do the math right, it should be within like an eighth. So essentially we have the double panel wainscot built. We just need to put the top rail on. So we'll throw the camera on a tripod because I'll need John's help to get this thing situated. We'll have one guy on this end, one guy on that end. And then if we line those two ends up, we know it's set perfectly because the top and bottom rail are the same length and everything is referenced off the bottom rail. So there's no need for spacers. There's no need for any of that. We just line up the ends and the rest is self-setting. And at this point, it's also real crucial that these were all cut on a stop block because these all need to be the same size. If they're not, this is at the point that it's really gonna show because when you put a straight board on top of these boards, if, if this one was like an eighth inch taller, you would get this like teeter-totter effect on the top rail and that means it would create a gap on these three and then it would create a gap on these three. And the only thing to do at that point would be is to fill those gaps in with Bondo or plastic wood or something. So using the stop block, you can avoid all that. And the painter's really gonna love you if you use a stop block because that's a lot of gaps that you'd have to fill. And since we're the painter of our own projects, we love ourselves. How are you looking there? Yeah. All right, cool. This thing will actually raise up. We have our chalk line up here that we referenced with the laser. This will raise up to that. It'll be about a quarter inch up off the floor. And then there's gonna be a shoe molding too. But check that out, I think that looks so cool. One by two cap on its side and a cove molding. Uh, well, tempered hardboard first to eliminate this texture and then a cove molding wrap inside of each panel. It's gonna be really cool. And the cove I think is like half by half. So it'll be just real subtle. getting ridiculous. Seriously. Well, he did say they wanted like a coat rack right here. So there you have it. There's the uh, double panel wainscot or judge's panel, whatever you want to call it. Don't judge me though. No, I'm just kidding. But I think this thing looks really cool, uh, especially when we trim it out and it's going to pop so much even more. And especially with this dark, deep blue and then the stark white. That's going to look nice. So other than that, we're going to keep moving right along to the next easiest wall, which will be this one. And that brings me to another point under these windows where there's not a lot of room for anything. What we do there is we just fill that in with a one by whatever. In this case, it'll be a one by 12 because that's the only thing that'll fit there. And then in these areas here where there's not a lot of space for a panel, obviously, we're still gonna put just a solid board that's 60 inches high and put that same cap and shoe molding on it so it's all balanced and it all looks good. You have to do that sometimes. You're not gonna be able to fit a panel everywhere. So under the window, up against the doors and little tight spaces, it's just a one by. So that's it. Let me know if you guys have any questions on this one. You will be seeing more of this job as we progress. And yeah, we'll catch up with you guys then.